this lesson is about the dot product and the cross product together. It'll be dot product, talking about it. Another video will be the cross product, and then we'll do some problems um, like we did last time. Huh. So let's just talk about the dot product first. My cats are kind of having a little fun out there, so uh, just ignore them. They might come racing in here and cause a little bit of havoc, but we're going to keep plugging along so we can get this video done and get you guys moving forward. All right, so the things that we know now for both of these lessons is going to be that V is the vector with I component V1, J component V2, K component V3. And W is the vector with I component W1, J component W2, K component W3. So let's talk about the dot product. The dot product is a type of multiplication. We call it vector multiplication. Now it technically isn't the multiplication we know and love like we use in real numbers, but it is when we call multiplication or call the operation multiplication in vectors, we call it dot product. Okay, and what dot product does for us is it finds the smallest angle between two vectors. There are a couple of angles between two vectors. Two of them are small and two of them are large. And what the dot product always guarantees is the smallest of the two. When I write down this on a piece of paper, I don't say V times W, I say V dot W. So this is pronounced vector V dot vector W. Now this, these dots here have nothing to do with dot product. They're just bullet points. That's the dot for dot product. And it is a bigger dot than what you would use in multiplication of real numbers. There's a geometric formula for the dot product that's equal to the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W times the cosine of the angle, the smallest angle between V and W. And again, we consider this a geometric version. The second version is an algebraic version. V dot W equals V1 W1. So I multiply the I components plus V2 W2 multiply the J components. V3 W3 multiply the K components and I add them up. Now this is the algebraic version. Um, these two formulas right here are equal. So if this number equals V dot W and V dot W is also this number, that means that the two right hand sides are also equal. And that's utilized to find the angle between two vectors. So say that you have these two vectors right here. I, I find the dot product and I find their magnitude and what I have are these two things being equal. The only unknown will be the angle and then you solve for that. So don't forget that these two formulas here are equal. Very important to remember. When you do the dot product to two vectors, your result is not a vector. It is a scalar or constant scalar result. So this can get confusing when you compare cross product. So cross product is always a vector result. Dot product is always a scalar result. So if you're getting a, a vector when you're doing dot product, that's a problem. You, you shouldn't be doing that. The last thing about dot product is it can calculate or can be used to calculate work done on an object. I'm sorry work done by a force on an object. Now if you want to read further about that, uh, there's a nice little description of it on page 707 in the textbook. Okay, sorry, let me move that up a little bit. 
can be used to calculate work done by a force on an object. Again, page 707 in your textbook does a really nice discussion about it. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about are some special things about vec uh, dot products that are extremely helpful. All right, extremely helpful. So let's start with our special notes. First of all, if I do V dot W and I get a scalar of zero, this has a special meaning. It means that the vector V is orthogonal. To vector w. Now what does orthogonal mean? That means perpendicular. So when we use the word orthogonal in vectors, that means perpendicular. Don't ask me why we change the names, but we do. So that means that if I get a dot product of zero, that means the vector v is perpendicular to the vector w, but we're going to use the word orthogonal. Now why, why does that work? So if I draw two vectors that are perpendicular to one another, here's V and here's W, that means that the angle between them, theta, is 90 degrees. If I go back up to this formula here, I see that if theta is 90 degrees, the cosine of that is zero, meaning this whole thing becomes zero and the dot product is zero. So that's the reason why it works. Very handy little formula that we'll see later in class will becomes very important. The dot product can be calculated in any dimension two D or higher. So you can be in 17D, have two vectors, and calculate the dot product between them. It's very exciting. And what I want you to do is read the properties that are available to us with um, dot product. And those are on, well, they're found in the boxes on the text, found in the boxes in the text. on page 702, 703, and 707. Be familiar with those. Now don't memorize them, but you should be aware like that the commutative property holds, that there's a form of distributive property that holds, but pay real close attention to the dots and the scalars and the vectors and what's what. Okay, now before we go on to the next page, or go on to cross product, we're going to do the problem on the very top of this next page because it's pretty cool. It's a great result of uh, something that dot product does. So let's take a look at it. Let's see if I can move this up just a little bit so that we can see the whole line. Oh, come on now. Don't give me a hard time. Is it giving me a hard time? Uh, I think we just get it in there. There we go. So this is about normal vectors, which are vectors perpendicular to a plane, and the equation of a plane. So if I say that a vector is normal to a plane, that means that it's perpendicular to a plane. Again, we're kind of switching the vocabulary around, but don't, don't let it bother you. Just know when you say normal, that means perpendicular. Again, something's going to come in really handy in Chapter 17. So let's just follow the instructions and see what miracles happen. So we're going to consider this random plane and create a vector n from the coefficients of the plane. So I'm going to rewrite the plane in this form. Can you see what's different? So what is different? Normally our planes are z equals mx plus ny plus c. But in this case, I've rewritten it so all the variables are on one side and the constant is alone on the other. So in order for this to work, it has to be written in that form. And then I create my vector n. So n is equal to 2i plus 3j minus k.
for step number one. Step number two is find two points on a plane, the same plane, and make a vector A that goes through those two points. So if you're going to find two points that lie on a plane, you kind of just guess, guess and check, right? So I'm going to say, okay, what if uh, X is 1 and Y is 1? So that means that I have 2 plus 3. And if I make Z1, doesn't 2 plus 3 minus 1 equal 4? So I'm going to guess that point, and let's do a little check. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 1 equals 4. Sure enough, so this is my check here. Always check your work. Uh, now it says I need two points, though. So let's do 1 and 0. What does that give me? That gives me 2, 0, 2 plus 0. And then if I make this Z minus 2, then it'll be 2 plus 0. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 0 minus a negative 2. So that's going to also give me 4. So that works. So there's our two points that lie on the plane. You can make any two points you want, and this works. So if you don't want to do the same two points I do, turn the video off, find two other points, make a vector A that goes through it, and this works no matter what. It's very cool. Let's try. Let's make A, though. So we learn how to make the vector between two points by just taking the difference between, you know, x's, y's, and z's. So in this case, I'm going to do, I'm going to start, this is my to and from. It doesn't matter either which way you do it. So 1 minus 1, i, plus 0 minus 1, j, plus negative 2 minus 1, k. Um, then don't be afraid if a component's 0. There we go. So my a vector, if you use the same points as me, or and, and I find the vector between, it should be the same as mine. If you use two different points, just make sure it's right, and let's move on to the last part. So the last part here is finding n dot a. So let's see. If I take n, let's write down what these vectors are. So 2, 3, minus 1, and a is 0, minus 1, minus 3. Now, I go back and forth between this notation and this notation so you can get used to it, but don't mix the notation. There should be no i, j's, and k's in this notation, and there should be no pointy brackets here. Don't mix them. Pick one and stick with it. So if I do n dot a, according to the formula, I don't like that formula. It's got a scritch on it. According to the formula, I just have to multiply the i's, add it to the multiplication of the j's, add it to the multiplication of the k's. Okay, that's all i got to do. So I'm going to multiply the i's, add it to the multiplication of the j's, multiply the k's. Okay, just multiply and add. So I got 0 minus 3, plus 3, and I get 0. So what does that result mean? That means that the vector n and the vector a are perpendicular, right? So let me draw a little picture here. So here's my original plane. And we built a by picking two points in that plane and finding a vector between them. And then I took my vector n and dotted it, and I actually got the vectors being perpendicular. So what can we conclude from that? Well, this is what we can conclude. Let's go back to our original place that we got n from. So I got n from simply rewriting the plane this way and peeling off the coefficients of the uh, x, y, and z, and I create this vector n. Well, it turns out that this vector n is related to the plane in a certain way. Which way is that? Oh, it's perpendicular to the plane. So the conclusion we have to make, if we create n, the vector n, as in step 1, n is always perpendicular. to the plane it came from.
very, very crucial result. Off to cross product.